So in this recipe, we're putting together a delicious short rib. It's slow cooked, tastes amazing. And it's fantastic if you're on a low carb diet, especially if you combine it with my delicious basic cauliflower rice recipe. Most of the time I cook vegetarian, but sometimes I like to eat meat. And when I cook meat, I want it to be delicious. And this is one of my favorite meals to make when I cook beef. This dish has tons of amazing flavor, a little bit of sweetness, and I really like the way these short ribs come out. I've tried making short ribs several other ways. I know a lot of people like to make it with red wine, but I find that using sherry and balsamic vinegar gives a much better, richer flavor that I just love for a Sunday night dinner. So let's dive in and see how to make this amazing beef short rib dish. So first off, we've got the ingredients here. We've got about six ounces of tomato paste. So one of those small cans of tomato paste, one medium onion, three medium carrots, three sprigs of celery, six cloves of garlic, 130 ounce container of beef stock, or if you already have it in your freezer, you can also use my vegetarian stock. It works great in this recipe. One cup of dry sherry, which is about eight grams of carbs, so really low in carbs. A half cup of balsamic vinegar, and one of the things I noticed when looking at different types of balsamic vinegar is that you really need to look at the label and make sure they don't add extra sugar if you're trying to make this low carb. A quarter of a cup of olive oil and two and a half pounds of beef short ribs. I'd recommend five pounds if you're cooking for a lot of people. I would say this makes about three to four portions. The first thing you want to do before you start prepping any of the other ingredients is to take out your ribs and season them liberally with salt and a bit of pepper. And then we're going to set those ribs aside while we're prepping the vegetables, and we're just going to let that salt do its magic. So first thing we want to do is just roughly chop up the carrots, celery, and onions. This dish is going to cook quite a while, so chopping up the vegetables really small really doesn't do anything. And it's kind of nice to have some of the bigger carrot pieces in particular later on. So I'm cutting up each of these into about three-quarter inch pieces. And then we're just going to roughly smash the garlic and peel it. And you can roughly chop it if you want to. Again, this is going to cook for long enough that it's not really going to matter too much. And, and personally, I like to find little nuggets of well-cooked garlic at the end of this meal. And next step is to brown the meat. And this is really critical. This is where a lot of the flavor is going to come from. So to brown the meat, you might want to do this outside or definitely turn your over-the-range fan to high. And then we're going to add in two tablespoons of olive oil to the pan. We're going to let the pan get really hot so the meat should sizzle right as soon as you touch it into the pan. And then we want to fry the meat for about two minutes on the bigger sides and maybe about one minute on each of the ends. We want to make sure we get a nice browning on each edge of the meat. This really adds to the flavor. It's really important. Don't skip this step. And also don't worry if some of the brown bits stick to the bottom of the pan. Um, we're going to get that when we cook the vegetables in it and when we deglaze the pan later on. So then after we've browned all the sides of the meat, pull them out of the pan. And the next up, if you need to, add a little bit more olive oil in there. Um, if not, just go ahead and toss all the vegetables in there, stir fry that for a little bit. Then we're going to add in our balsamic vinegar, stir that for about one minute. Then we're going to go ahead and add in the tomato paste and mix that all up really well. You might want to be careful here because the vinegar going into the pan, hot pan, is going to release a lot of vinegary fumes. So you might want to back up a little bit and cook that for 30 seconds to one minute. Then add in the dry sherry and then use the dry sherry to make sure you deglaze the pan fully. And so now this step of the process is done. Next thing we're going to do is put all of these ingredients into our Instant Pot. And you can do a slow cook. Uh, I would recommend if you're going to slow cook this meal, do it for about seven hours, six hours at a minimum. It's probably going to take seven hours. But if you want to use the Instant Pot, it also comes out great. And it takes just about one and a half hours on high. So then go ahead and transfer all of the vegetables with the balsamic vinegar and the dry sherry into your slow cooker or instant pot. Place the meat on top, then add in the beef stock. If you're slow cooking this, you're going to want to slow cook it on medium for about six hours. And if you're pressure cooking it, pressure cook it on high for two hours. And then once it's done, we're going to use the slow release method on the pressure cooker. So we're just going to let it sit there until the pressure has released by itself. And then when you take the lid off, your meat should be extremely soft and falling off the bone. And if for some reason it isn't doing that, and if you've slow cooked it, you're going to want to slow cook it for at least another hour. And if you didn't get that nice falling off the bone result with the pressure cooker, set it for another 20 minutes. And if you want to keep this dish low carb, combine it with my basic cauliflower rice recipe. It's a perfect pairing, 
and it tastes delicious like this. Hey, not bad.